Kelly Ripa? Oh. Can she play Sarah from the Book of Tobit? Uh, it's hard to take television and move it to the big screen. So there are obstacles to that. I think in people's minds, they're, uh, what don't you call it, predestined to reject someone from television. And all of a sudden, they're, it's pretty hard to do. But Kelly is charismatic. Sarah is charismatic. I don't know how stubborn Kelly Ripa is. Uh, she could probably play the, the age-wise. She could probably play the part. Because Sarah in the book of Tobit is married seven times. And seven times she's widowed. Now, that's not an insult to Kelly. Uh, Well, let me tell you the whole story, just in case uh, this ever gets around to uh, Kelly's people. I know there's a big uh, moat dug around every celebrity, but uh, maybe her people will uh, let, uh, let this script through. She could do it justice because she's cheerful, and I would hope she's resilient. You know, to be have a long-running television show, she must be resilient. She's probably put up with a lot of bullshit. So, could she play a uh, woman who's been widowed seven times? Yeah. And will there be an eighth wedding? Yeah. She's not going to give up. I mean, she's probably a bulldog. Uh, she's a cute little poodle on TV. But I guarantee you turn those cameras off and she is a alpha female. And I won't say the B word, but just alpha female. Uh, she's going to take care of business. And Sarah does. Well, I don't know. It's a, into, open to interpretation. Let me just tell you the story. You ask about Kelly Ripa. Or let me tell you about Sarah and see if the two the actress and the character meet. Uh, Sarah is a nice Jewish girl from a good Jewish family, so she brings none of this on herself. But uh, seven of her husbands are killed immediately after their wedding by a demon. They don't even make it to the uh, wedding chamber. Uh, there is uh, an empty marital bed, and the weddings, the music, uh, the marriages are never consummated. And does she uh, give up? No. Does she have her doubts? She doubts herself and her ability to endure it, but she does not give up her faith. She does not. It does not cause her to abandon her faith or stop believing in God. That's the moral of the story. I guess there's two morals to the story, and that's one of them. Uh, the other comes from her future father-in-law, Tobit. Tobit is blind and 80, and he is going to take care of his family. Uh, he put money away when he was young uh, in London. He's in, Am in Amsterdam now. He's a Jew in Amsterdam during the 1930s, which is uh, a bit on the brink. And there's a lot at stake because everybody knows in 1941, the Nazis are going to show up and they're going to cart all the Dutch Jews to concentration camps. And uh, it's especially brutal. Uh, the Dutch Jews resisted, and I don't want to disparage any of the other nationalities that were involved in the Holocaust, but the, the Jews from Amsterdam did not get on 
trucks or on trains easily. There was a resistance and it was and a rebellion and it was serious business in Amsterdam. So well, how did the uh, Nazis uh, respond? Well, it, well you're going to resist? Well, let's, we can be more brutal. So everyone knows uh, what happened to the Jews in Amsterdam. Uh, and an 80-year-old man uh, lacking money uh, and uh, can't really make money anymore. His old source of uh, revenue is gone by his disability. He's blinded. But he still has that. He's prideful and he wants to feed his family and take care of his family as a wife and kid. But he remembers money that he sacked away in London years ago. 60 years before. So it's, with interest, developed into quite a uh, retirement nest egg. He can't travel. He's blind. And uh, his son, so he sends his son. His son doesn't want to go by himself. How would you like to travel from Amsterdam to uh, London? No, they don't, they don't wire money anymore. Uh, not like we do today. Uh, I think I misspoke. They didn't wire money like we do today. And so uh, Tobit prays for a companion. Uh, Raphael shows up and he's not, he's an angel, but it's not evident. He kind of keeps it on the down low. Now also over in London, Sarah prays for uh, God to send something, some kind of solution. So Raphael is going to uh, kill the demon and escort Toby over to retrieve the money. Well, Toby meets Sarah, and this is going to lead to the eighth wedding. Uh, but can you imagine Toby? Uh, meeting Kelly Ripa. A good Jew, a nice Jewish girl who's had seven husbands, and they're all dead. And when a demon kills you, it's it's not pretty. Uh, so this movie is really a contrast back and forth. Uh, it's a roller coaster, from one wedding to murder, back to a wedding to another murder, and it gets somewhat r repetitious. So Kelly would need to be cheerful, like she is on television, but she'd also need to be resilient and obstinate. And she gets that way because of her religion. Uh, Raphael's going to smooth things over. He's going to kill the demon, and he's going to make sure uh, the money gets back, the retirement gets back to Tobit in uh, Holland. Problem is, I have said it in the 1930s. The actual book of Tobit is 3,000 years old, and it was set in uh, modern-day Iraq, Mesopotamia. The Jews in northern Israel were kidnapped and taken into what's called the Babylonian uh, enslavement. Uh, a lot of people. 99% of the people on this entire planet know about Moses and Egypt and the Exodus, and uh, very few know about the Babylonian enslavement. Uh, but that's where it takes place. I don't think you can sell a $12, $15 ticket to a film set 3,000 years ago, where it's just it's too far, it's detached. All I did was take uh, the Bible the verses in the Bible and make a scene on each one. And my script is uh, 89 pages. But if you, I don't even have a longer treatment. I just tell people, well, read the Bible, read the Catholic or uh, Orthodox Christian Bible. It's half the Bibles. Uh, you can find Tobit uh, online. And then I, on a different uh, streaming platform, uh, I, that I said that, and I said, well, and just email me, and I'll send you the script. And I had a guy email me and then want to meet with me on Zoom, look me square in the eye, and tell me 
don't send that to everybody. And I said, why? And he said, they'll steal it. And I, 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 I tried to be genteel about it. You know, when you teach political science for 30 years, you learn how to whitewash a lot of stuff. You don't want to offend the Republican kids, the Democratic kids, the atheist kids, the religious kids. The Everybody comes with these predetermined cookie cutter idea who they are, and they really never thought about it. But you don't. You want them to think about it, but you don't want to hurt their feelings. They'll write nasty things to the dean and give you a bad evaluation. And it'll get around campus that you're a bigot and, oh gosh, your enrollment will drop. And that's university politics. So I'm trained. But I had to say to the guy, the story's 3,000 years old. It's in half the Bibles. One and a half billion people know the story from their early religious training. No one's going to steal it. It's already out there. Uh, and uh, I guess we made friends, but uh, I, I'm not sure. I don't know why Hollywood is so adamant on sending unsolicited material rejection slips. This is unsolicited. This is illegal to read for us to read this. I, I, it was, I had a re response that actually phrased it that way. It's Ill <laughs> my response, you know, I'm a smart ass, but it, you can, you can do that over the internet and I'm retired. I don't, I don't have to, I've got the ultimate tenure, a house with no mortgage. So, uh, Oh, what did I say? Oh, the state legislature out there in uh, uh, California has made it illegal. Wow, I didn't realize. I uh, My ninth grade high school history teacher said someday everything was going to be against the law. And he was warning us about totalitarianism. Uh, I didn't get a response. Uh it's a civil liability. I, I understand that. People don't want to get sued, but I don't understand why you would necessarily refuse to read a story that's 3,000 years old, known by at least 1.5 billion people who were taught that at a young age, and it's in half the Bibles. Uh, who in the world... And Hollywood has enough power to steal that idea. We're going to steal it. It's been in the public domain for ever, forever, for hundreds of generations. And so, but at the same time, it's never been made into a film. Do you ever think the only person who would write a film based on Tobit is anti-establishment or not in the establishment and ask yourself why wouldn't these Hollywood executives film executives go to the state legislature like almost every other position profession uh, baseball has statutory liability lawyers in some states have statutory liability doctors in almost every state have statutory liability Accountants, uh, corporations sometimes can get uh, liability, but drug companies have a certain liability in some states. Um, but Hollywood executives refuse. Uh, it's because they don't want to read anti-establishment scripts. It's a convenient excuse. How are black, brown, transgender, lesbian, gay, how are females going to make their way into the establishment with 98% of 
of your query letters coming back, not coming back, or coming back with, this is unsolicited. You know, there is a huge revolution going on in this country. It's populist revolution, and uh, it's in both the Democratic and Republican parties, and it's anti-establishment. What, a third of, between a third and a half of Democrats are anti-establishment. Fully a half, or maybe a little more. Let's say 51% of Republicans are anti-establishment. Uh, you can talk about Trump if you want. He's anti-establishment. He does not like, he's a capitalist, and I think he's disliked for a lot of, a lot of those reasons. But mostly, I think he sees himself as a populist. He is there to tear down, he was there to tear down the establishment. He has dis absolute disrespect. He used foul language right to their face. And uh, if he didn't get reelected, that's part of the reason. Uh, he was an angry anti-establishment. Now, I can see the establishment in Washington falling and being replaced with a new paradigm, a new political paradigm. I have a hard time seeing the Hollywood establishment allowing that. So they're not going to go for any uh, limited liability, statutory lim uh, limitation on uh, people's ability to sue them. It's too easy just to say, no, we can't read that. Well, they don't want to read it. They'd rather keep making the same movies over and over and over again. If I get statutory limit limitation, I'm going to have to hire some readers, and I might have to, oh, hell, I'll have to read them myself. I don't want to do that. I, I might find something. I might be wasting my time. I might find something I don't like, and uh, I'm, not, I'm not willing to do that. Uh, it's kind of like going to McDonald's. You know, they've done... Economics and business departments do more surveys than political scientists. Uh, and a lot of it's consumer, consumer, uh, consumer reports, excuse the pun. Uh, but uh, good academic studies of McDonald's shows the number one reason they've been successful is predictability. And you know what you're getting. So business in Hollywood is a lot like McDonald's. When they pick up a script, they know what they're going to get because they've got a list of writers. And they actually use the word, my list. Oh, he's not on my list. Is he on the list? Can we read that? So, you're not, how, can you, how can you know this and not understand the establishment in, in uh, almost said Washington, D.C., in uh, Hollywood. They, they don't want to get off their ass. They want, the, it's the good old boys. It's, I'm not going to read anything unless I know you. I don't know why you think you're safe reading, safe from lawsuit by reading something from someone you know. Uh, if they sue you, you're gonna they're gonna be you're gonna be taken off their list. So that's deterrence from suing you. No, if you st if you steal someone's story, you're probably gonna get sued. Uh, if Hollywood went to Washington Washington D.C. and got a federal, and they went to uh, Sacramento and got a statewide statutory limitation on lawsuits, uh, film would change. They'd have to, because the market, read scripts that are outside the establishment. And you'd have black, brown, gay, transgender women. Uh, unlikely screenwriters. Uh, the forgotten, the current forgotten. 
uh, they'd get their scripts out there. Uh, you know what really burned me up was, uh, well, I can't think of the year. I think there were 14 African Americans nominated for uh, Academy Awards and not a single one won. Many of them, and none of the actors, none of the acting positions was an African American. And uh, I was listening to the analysis on, I don't know, what, what news. And uh, this whole issue was out there. But the argument was made that there aren't any black screenwriters to write good parts for black actors, like white screenwriters can't. And that begs the question, there aren't any black screenwriters. Whoa, they can't write. They can write. They're just locked out by the establishment. These people in the establishment don't want to read new scripts. And so there's not going to be any, forgive my phraseology, I, I, black movies, black roles. Uh, you're not going to get those until you stop sending these damn letters. Get off your ass and read the script. Uh, get off your ass and go to Sacramento and say, hey, I don't want to get sued for giving a guy a chance. And guess what? The legislature, legislatures in, uh, in every state have under certain cir circumstances to foster invention, creativity, to support capitalism, and to support the free market. Granted, limited liability. You can't, um, they just passed the law. You can't sue a guy for this. Uh, it's in state constitutions. Uh, state legislatures are uh, invested with this power. Uh, in Article 10, not, not Article, Amendment 10 of the U.S. Constitution gives all the powers not mentioned in the Constitution to the state legislature. And so uh, it's up to the state legislature. They're lazy. The state, le the, the state legislature, I think, would do it, especially in a populous state like California that want to see the black, brown, and transgender script read. They just want to they, they they want an equal chance, an even playing field, and the Hollywood establishment will not give them that. And that's why they keep sending these uh, asinine letters. Oh, they don't do it. It's a robot. It's a program. You just hook it up to your uh, email server, and uh, it'll take care of the rest. And uh, Maybe they have eight writer friends. They'll just wait till those come along. And another thing, a part of it is the opulence of Hollywood and the film industry. Uh, you can make enough money to survive, and you can survive well. You can live well by sitting on your ass. And I don't know a farmer that can do that. You know, I was raised on a dairy farmer, and... Uh, on a dairy farm, and uh, I watched my grandfather, father, get up at four o'clock. Even today, I don't I didn't milk the cow in uh, forty years, but uh, you know they have machines. But you gotta gotta be there. Uh, get up at four o'clock, and then milk again at six. And uh, they had like five hundred cattle. So I um, took all day, twice a day. So uh, what movie, what, what so name someone in the movie industry that uh, gets up at four, works all day, and then works again starting at six, 
at four and six. And then uh, it's dark when they wake up, and it's dark when they uh, come in. Uh, so you can sit, yes, you can sit on your ass and miss stories like Tobit. Or you can get off your ass and read it. It, it does matter to me. I, I, I can't say I don't care. Uh, you know, everybody faces their own mortality. I'm not 19 anymore. Uh, I'd like to see this done uh, a billion and a half people want to see it done they've seen it on paper they have an expectation I know you've heard uh, expectation of privacy that determines whether the fourth amendment is is used if you have an expectation of privacy they have to have a warrant or probable cause depending on the situation but it's triggered by a expectation. Listen, the public expects this to be done because it's in their holy uh, texts, because they were taught this as a little kid. Uh, many of them know the obstinance of an entrenched establishment, the kind of people that run Hollywood. So, yeah, I care. I want it done. A lot of people do that. They'll line up to buy the tickets. Uh, I don't know if anybody has the balls. Frankly, you'd have to admit uh, that Catholics and Jews and Orthodox Christians can get along well enough to support a movie. Uh, as a scientist, it can be done. There are interfaith missions all over the world. And uh, Christians, Jews, I don't see why is, uh, Muslims won't see that won't enjoy this movie. Okay, the characters are Jewish, uh, but they're good Jews. They're uh, not militant or uh, bigoted in any way. The original stories happens before Islam is even ever invented, uh, before Muhammad. Uh, the Arabs uh, have the same belief in the Old Testament that Jews and Christians do, but we can't make a movie about it. 